in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the really great extensions that I have working on my Visual Studio Code environment. I will discuss and show you how they can make your coding life easier. Microsoft is doing a very splendid job with Visual Studio Code. And this is one of the most popular IDEs being used today. So without any further delays, let's get straight into it. And the first one is called Better Comments. And as the name suggests, it allows you to style or highlight your comments according to the type of comment that you're adding. So let's have a look at an example. I have opened my Java class at the moment and normally I would just do a double slash and enter my text to put a single line comment. However, if I use better comments, I could stylize my comments in different colors and formats using the different tokens. The next extension that I wanted to show you is called Peacock. So Peacock allows you to change the color of your workspace. And this is really helpful if I have multiple instances of my workspace running or if I want to associate a particular color with a particular workspace. To change my workspace color, I just need to press Ctrl Shift P and type Peacock. I can change to a favorite color and choose from the available options. Or I can enter a color of my choice myself and provide the RBG values in the hex code. There are also some other useful options that you can choose from. Next up is an extension called presentation mode. And it's extremely useful for people who are presenting or doing a screen recording. And once the extension is installed, you can go into the extension settings and you can set the zoom level. You can also go into the key bindings and add a keyboard shortcut. And once the shortcut is set up, I can just use the keyboard shortcut to enable or disable presentation mode. So the next extension that I want to show you is called workspace sidebar. Once the extension is installed, it will show you this workspace sidebar icon in the left panel. You can configure the extension settings and provide the folder where you want to look for all the workspaces. And you can also provide the depth of the subfolders that you want to look into. And once that is done, you can easily switch between the different workspaces that are available within your folder. The next must have extension is called Git Graph. Once it's installed, it will appear down here in the status bar below. And you can click on that to easily visualize your Git history. So next up, I have some extensions that I'm basically using for doing my Java and Spring Boot development. Java extension pack installs the language support, the debugger and the test runner, and also the Maven support for Java. Using the extension pack, I'll be able to run and debug my Java programs. A Maven panel is added in my sidebar and it scans the POM and it allow me to run all the different Maven commands. Similarly, I have added another extension pack, which is called the Spring Boot extension pack. So this one installs the Spring Boot dashboard, which will again make another panel visible on my sidebar called the Spring Boot dashboard. It shows me a list of all my Spring Boot apps and I can also run or debug them from here. This extension pack is also providing support to create Spring Boot projects using Spring Initializer. I can do Control Shift P and just say Spring Initializer. And I can either create a Maven or a Gradle project. Let's go and create a Maven project for now. I'll choose the Spring Boot version as 2.5.3 and the project language as Java. And let's enter the group ID as com.example and the artifact ID as demo. And I'll specify the packaging as jar and the Java version is 11. So now it will ask me to choose the dependencies. So let me select the dependencies that I want. And then I'll press enter to continue. And this will ask me to save the project in a particular location. So I'll just save it here. So you can see that it's actually created the Spring Boot project for me using the Spring Initializer. And I've just opened the folder where it created the Spring Boot project. And you can see that the POM and the Maven wrappers and the source code is available. Next up, I have the Docker extension from Microsoft. And if you're working on containers, this extension will make it really easy for managing your containers within Visual Studio Code. 
Once the extension is installed, the Docker icon will be visible on the sidebar over here. It will show you a list of all your containers and your Docker images. And you can also connect your Docker registry in this panel. For example, I have connected my Docker Hub account in there and it shows me the list of images that are available. This extension also allows you to run some general Docker commands from here. For example, you can start or stop or restart your Docker images or view the logs. You can also run your images or you can do operations like pull, push and tag. Next up is a SQL Server extension provided by Microsoft. Because I'm using a SQL Server database for my backend, this extension allows me to connect to my database and browse through my database or run queries. Once the extension is installed, it will provide the SQL Server icon on the sidebar over here. I can go in there and add a new connection. I just need to provide my server name or host name, database name, and that is optional. And whether the authentication type is integrated or SQL login or Active Directory from Azure. I'll just choose SQL login for now and just provide my SQL username and password. And whether I want to save my password or not. And then I can choose a profile name to save this connection. And once that is done, I can expand through my databases and look at my databases and the tables and the procedures that are available. And this also allows me to run queries as I would do in a separate SQL client. Along with all these other extensions, I'm also using the dark plus material theme. And I really like this theme because I feel that the color combinations are providing a really good code readability and look really pleasant to the eyes. GitHub theme is another great looking theme and I like the GitHub dark default. Again, this is very pleasant and gives a very good code readability. With all of these extensions and customizations to my VS Code, I also turned on my settings sync because I didn't want to lose these settings or extensions in case there was a need to rebuild my machine or reinstall Visual Studio Code. You can configure your settings syncs to customize what you want to synchronize. And you can select say settings, keyboard, shortcuts, snippets, extension, and the UI state. And I have connected my settings sync with my GitHub account. So as soon as I log in again using my GitHub account, all my settings are automatically synchronized. The settings sync feature is directly provided by VS Code itself. And I didn't have to install any specific extension to get this working. So over here, I have a fresh copy of Visual Studio Code running on a Windows virtual machine. And I'll go in and turn on my settings sync. So I'll just go to manage and turn on settings sync and sign in and turn on. And I'm going to sign in with my GitHub account. Continue. And I'm just going to allow it to open in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see here, it's syncing all my extensions and settings from Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now the setting sync is done and all my extensions are now in place. And I've just opened one of my workspaces and you can see that all my themes and extensions and setup for my VS Code is identical to how I have it working on, on my Linux. So that's all I had to cover for this video. And I hope you find this video useful and thanks a lot for watching.